This is the plaintiff, Nancy Britt. She says she rented a house from the defendant, and on August 31st, her move-out day, she blocked the driveway with a huge dumpster. September 1st was the day she should have had the dumpster delivered. The blocked driveway delayed her movers by two hours, and the unreasonable defendant must be ordered to pay her additional expenses. She's suing for $1,241.55, the amount she's owed. This is the defendant, Betsy Buxton. She says the plaintiff was supposed to move out on August 17th, but kept delaying it. She had a dumpster delivered on August 31st, and she's sorry the plaintiff took so long to move out. But how's that her problem? Besides, she left the place a mess, and if anyone here is owed money today, it's certainly not the plaintiff. She's accused of dumping a dumpster. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $1,441 for damages and services rendered. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff rented from the defendant, was moving out and says the defendant blocked the movers with a dumpster. But the defendant says the plaintiff kept delaying her move out date. It's the case of the taking a dumpster. Point. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Nancy Britt, you yeah. are suing your former landlady, Betsy Buxton for $1,241.55, the remainder of your security deposit that you feel she's unlawfully withholding, as well as two more hours of mover's fees, which you say is her fault. You have a counterclaim against her for $1,441 in additional damages that you did not originally withhold from her security deposit because probably you're angry you got sued. All right, let's start with you. What happened? I am, well, I had rented, um, the defendant's home for three years, and when she told me she would be moving back into the property, I purchased a home of my own very nearby, and um, the moving date of my home that I was moving into got switched around a little, but I still had paid rent until August 31st. Um, she, Betsy had texted me and said that she was um, just heads up, I'm having a dumpster delivered and tile tomorrow, and I texted her back immediately, I think you have those, saying, I have movers coming tomorrow and they have to put a 20 foot ramp in the driveway and a moving truck and I don't want you on the property till after midnight tonight and I got there the next day and the dumpster was in the driveway. What happened with that? Why were you ordering it on the 31st instead of just waiting until the 1st? I asked the contractor to change that and he said that he couldn't get the dumpster people or the Home Depot to change the delivery date. Why? That happens all the time, people change delivery dates. That's so the dumpster gets, because it's a, it is like inconvenient, you know, but the dumpster gets brought over there and how does it delay your movers well, for two hours? Movers. Do you have an affidavit from the movers saying that that's why they had yes. to charge you two hours? Yeah, I don't an affidavit, I have an invoice from them. Does it say what I just said And it says though? additional labor um, due to dumpster parked in driveway. Okay, let's see, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm asking. I'm just trying to figure out if they say it was harder for yeah, them. Yeah, they had to move everything back through, the, they couldn't come through the house because the garage was also full of pallets of tile because uh, the house was being demoed inside. Um, so, so they couldn't go through the garage? They could not. Okay. You have uh, kept a significant portion of the security deposit of this tenant. You kept $941.55, and she's disputing why you kept that. So tell me what the problem was that caused you to keep that. The paint that was supposed to be restored to the original colors, it was slopped all over the molding. It was uh, hit the ceiling. Who um, did the pa Did you paint the place? No, I actually hired on um, Betsy's handyman, Alex. Alex, do you know Alex? Alex is my pool man. Alex is your pool man. That's okay. correct. Have you ever hired Alex to paint anything? No. Okay. Do you have pictures of the sloppy paint job? Yes. May I see it? And I have pictures Just of... Just a moment, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay, so I see that clearly whoever painted... Is that blue tape? I yeah, they, so. that's painter's tape that they put on to make the line. Just a second. I know why they put it on. Oh. Why don't they take it off if they're done with a paint job? When did you take these pictures? When I went to the house. After she left? Yes. Yeah, that's not supposed to be left there. And why is the, the former paint behind the toilet like that? What's this? That is where the paint went over the edge. Of what? It's it, The edge of what? I don't know what I'm looking at. It's so close up, I don't know what it's I'm looking at. It's the wall and the ceiling. No, I, the house come has over here, please. Come over here. Come over here. I'm really... What is this a picture of? That is 
probably the dining room or li okay. the living room. Okay, great. Now, what's this? This is These over the spray on the molding or over painting on the molding? Yeah. And Same more overpainting on the molding. So yeah, like this guy doesn't know how to paint, okay? Right. All right, all right, go ahead and go back. So how much did you keep to correct that stuff? I kept $500. Okay, so you withheld $500 for the paint repairs. Let's talk about the refrigerator left door panel. What happened there? It's dented from uh, carelessness by the tenant. May I see a picture of that? Yes, I have to show you on the phone. Oh, the two dents? Yes. Okay, so you had to replace that panel? Yes. Okay, and what's your response to that? My response to that is when I moved in, Betsy had put all new appliances in, and where the refrigerator was located, the very first week I was there and opened the refrigerator door, it's in a corner, and the door hit the corner molding. And I had told Betsy- Do you have a picture it, of that? Of the molding? Yeah. Where it is? No, so I can but see that as it's soon not your as negligence. it happened, I told Betsy, I said, listen. Did she, did she tell you that, that there, was a, uh, that there was a corner molding and that there was an issue with opening the refrigerator door? Yes. Okay, so in other words, she didn't make it up to not have to pay you when you told her you were keeping her security deposit. She told you about it beforehand. And did you look and see, and in fact, does that happen? Uh, if you open it completely Okay, no, but you should be able to open your refrigerator door, okay? If not, you need to get somebody to fix the tension on it so you can't open it past that. That's not reasonable, and I'm not going to allow you to deduct for that. Let's go to the next thing. Replace range top glass for stove. That concerns me. I saw that. What's going on here? That looks pretty bad. It does. Um, yeah, how'd I, that happen? I don't, you know, I just used it to cook on it. Did it's you clean a, it with Brillo? No. I, Looks like as maybe matter you did. Fact, Betsy told me what I needed to buy to clean that with when I moved in. Yeah, so how, I mean, obviously these were new appliances. Yeah. How did it get that bad? I, I don't know. I, that's the okay, only Okay, but burner. that's something that's you have to. But that, that's user. That's a user issue there. Right. It's it okay, is there. It's fine, but you understand yeah. why she's withholding for that, right? Yes. Okay, so that's three fifty. Yes. Okay. Power wash on the lanai deck. What was wrong with the lanai deck that you felt the need to withhold $275 of her security deposit for that? Uh, it was covered with um, plant debris, mildew, uh, grease, and I, I don't know what kind of stains they were. Okay. So it was power wash, and they tried to acid wash off that. Here are the pictures. Okay. Let's see that. What was, um, how, what condition did you leave the lanai in? I have pictures of it. It's... It, it's a, a candle uh, did drip in a spot off of a table. I have pictures of the lanai. Um, other than that, I've power washed that lanai many times. Okay, because this is these are weeds growing through the. I wasn't in charge of weeding. That was her responsibility. Was landscaping your responsibility? That's not weeds. That's inside the lanai on the brick. Papers. No, that's growing out of the lanai. Those are called yes. weeds. They're not supposed to be there. They're supposed to be yanked by your landscaper, exactly. right? No, that that's that? on the inside. So what? what on, the, on, the, on the pavers. It had to be scraped up. I'm sorry, so that's just cleaned up. Why are you withholding $275? That's what he charged me to do the... May I see the proof that you paid $275 for that? And what are these spots? That might be the candle wax. No, I don't think so. Those are I, black. I, if Betsy had What's ever... What's that? That's just... For, it's outdoors. Yeah, I know. What is it? I, I don't know. It, it looks like a chalky... But, I mean, you're, you know, when you're returning the house, you're supposed to return in the condition you got it. I don't think you got it like that. Well, I actually asked if I could borrow her power washer because I had borrowed it many times in the past, and um, she said it wasn't available. What, what I happened the that made you two dislike forth. each other so much? Did you I two get along during the three years? Yeah, the first uh, six months, she'd be over for Christmas and Thanksgiving. She and came over for Christmas and Thanksgiving? Yes, she did. And then what went wrong? So do tenants typically abuse the units that they rent? Yes, I think so. Why? Because it's not their stuff. What do you say? What do you say? Well, um, as someone that rents an apartment, I think that we don't. Like, I think that tenants usually end up having um, better... E-I-E-I-O. Yeah. Going inside the courtroom. Little things started happening that like? I was, um, I put a ding in the garage door and we were out to lunch one day and I told her. The two her, of you were out to lunch? Yeah. And wow. I mentioned it over lunch and uh, when she got back she looked at it and it was a 25 year old garage door that had many dings in it and she decided that I should pay $1,400 for a new garage door and that kind of started putting things we weren't as friendly after that. She ended up only making me pay for half of the garage Did door. you know each other before you moved in there? No. 
How much was the total of the security deposit? $1,950. Okay. How much did you already receive? I'm, I never cashed the check. I, I have it. Um, actually, I gave it to the court. I think it's 1000 and something. You didn't cash the check. That's why it's higher no, than I haven't. Okay. Um, you can cash a check. I'm sorry. How much is the check for? I, Betsy, do you know? 1,800 and some odd cents. I mean, 1,008 and 46 cents. 1,008? Mm -hmm. I have a copy of it. All right, based on everything I've looked at, the pictures, the, the estimates, the uh, arm's length nature or lack of arm's length nature of some of the estimates, and my own experience in what, um, what this kind of thing should cost to correct, I'm going to find as follows. I find that the defendant is entitled to keep $799.92 of the security deposit, the biggest portion of which is the range top, which clearly should not look that way, and the painting correction because a, you hired the pool man to do the painting and really it was abysmal. Um, so of the $941.55, which is what she withheld, I find that she should have withheld only part of that and I'm ordering her to pay that the, the um, difference back to you, which is $141.63. In addition, based on what I have seen about how crowded uh, this place was with stuff that shouldn't have been there on a day that she still uh, is still her home and she's trying to get out of there. The Herculean Olympics that she had to and her movers had to engage in because nobody could take anything out the garage door. It makes no difference really that this was able that they were able to bring the U-Haul to the garage to the garage with the ramp because there's only very few things that could have gone up that way with all of the tile in the way and pallets in the way and everything else. So I am going to award her as well the $300 that she is asking for additional moving fees for a net judgment in favor of the plaintiff in this case in the amount of $441.63. That is my verdict and on the counterclaim it's taken care of uh, with that net judgment. Thank you ladies. Thank you. All righty. Well, the plaintiff does prevail in this lawsuit. Ms. Buxton, if you'll step over here, let me just ask you a question. Now that she's gone, I mean, there's, there's bad blood here, isn't it? It's very obvious. That's a judgment call. No, it's, it's plain to see. We can all see it. Why, why so? Why, why is that? I have no answer for you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Okay. All right, Ms. Britt. How near are you going to be to her? I'm one light away. One light yeah, away. At a so quarter mile. You're still fairly close. Yeah, and I'm yeah. friends with all my neighbors there. Okay, very good. <laughs> well, you glad the way this worked out? Yeah, I, I mean, mean, it's I a mean, shame. You, you agree a lot of, you know, the countertop was bad? Yeah, and, yeah, I, I didn't even, I didn't know that it just, wouldn't come off. But yeah, that's absolutely valid. Okay, very good. Thank yeah. you very much. Congratulations. Thank okay. you. All right. Harvey? You know, depending on the state, uh, judges sometimes can award two and three times the real damages to punish landlords if they violate the law.